Ew. The Montec Titan Gold ATX 3.0 power supplies feature a Gen 5 PCIe power connector for adapter-free 40 series GPU installation and is available in 750, 850, 1000, and 1200 watt versions, giving you the power needed to power today's demanding PC components. 100% Japanese 105C capacitors provide improved performance, while the 135 millimeter fluid dynamic bearing fan with zero RPM mode keep all components cool, even during the most demanding workloads, all while the 80 plus gold rating and 10 year warranty provide end user peace of mind. Check out the Titan Gold lineup of Montec power supplies by clicking on the sponsored link in the description below. So this as you may or may not recognize, probably not because it's been so long now, is a Case Labs case. This is my SMA8. Fun fact, this was actually the very first gunmetal gray one they ever made. If you've looked at any of the Case Labs like literature from the past and you see this case in gunmetal on their, on their site, it's this one. I was the first one that they provided it for. As you can see, it's a little neglected as are most things in my life. I would say ask my wife, but that's morbid and we're happily married, so shut up. Moving on, the reason why I'm even talking about this is you guys might have noticed, if you've paid attention, that the Case Labs name is back. A company in Sweden bought the rights and the, the patent, not actually the problem was they didn't have a patent, that's how they ended up getting shut down because good old Thermal Take stole their, their aesthetics and when Case, or Case Labs got mad about it, Thermal Take, threatened to sue Case Labs. So rather than fight the big company, Case Labs basically just folded up. And this was back in like 2014, I think? 2015, 2014? Way back then, long time ago. Anyway, fast forward to today, a company in Sweden has basically bought all the tooling. I never noticed these were like kind of bent, but that's okay because they, the way they snap in. A company in Sweden for the third time has bought the patent and they've said that they're going to start producing the cases again. I said bought the patent. I, I, they, they don't have a patent. They bought the design. They bought the rights to it, etc. The tooling, the machines. I, by the way, I wish I had made a video about this. I didn't. When I picked up this case, I went to their facility in, um, it was out in the San Fernando Valley. And then I looked at their machines. Look, they, they did this old school. We're talking hydraulic press brakes that would bend the metal and you're all doing it with a foot pedal and and it wasn't computerized. It was human beings here in the US building an awesome product that unfortunately they didn't protect. So it is what it is at that point. But as you can see, all these parts are modular, right? They just kind of snap on and I'm gonna snap on. I mean, it's so basic the way it's built. Like you got these little ball nubbins and you got these little ball nubbin receivers or ball cradlers, if you will. And then when they go on, <laughs> shut up, Phil. This is a family show. They literally just pop in there. They're, they're industrial design. Because Case Labs, at least the company that owned Case Labs and made Case Labs, also made server racks and stuff for like the US government. They're reading our brains, man. But if you've ever had a panel get bent or broken or messed up, like this one here, you see has all kinds of scratches on it. And that's, this, this case has gone through so many iterations. Remember, this was Skunk Works. If you've been around for a long time, you know Skunk Works was kind of like the staple of the channel. And then along with the death of SLI, kind of became the death of Skunk Works. Because at one point I had a three-way SLI um, 1080, 1080, it was a 1080s? No, 980, 980 system, not TIs either, 980s. And then I had three uh, Titan X, the first Maxwell Titan X, and then that was it. Then I went two 1080s and then past that, as you guys know, SLI was basically dead. 2080 Ti, 2080 could SLI still, but it just, anyway, nothing supported it at that point. It was neat. And with that became the death of my dual loop customs. You can see it's literally still sitting exactly as it was when I took it apart and stole the reservoir out of this. Where did it go? <laughs> I know I used it somewhere to be nostalgic, but I forgot where I put it. But this had some of the most unique designs. By the way, this particular setup was awesome because it allowed me to run a 560 millimeter lower radiator. To put this into perspective, this is actually the same diameter as the Yamato's 18 inch gun. Put that in your brain and smoke it. But some of the amazing features were like, the removable motherboard tray. You know how many of you are about to have your minds blown right now? <laughs> yeah, maybe old school. <laughs> and the thing was, you could invert it. 
You could, you could totally invert this and have an inverted design. I can't right now because of the way I have it mounted, but everything is, you know, screw assembled. Look at that, everything screws, no rivets anywhere. It makes taking it apart and painting it awesome. And I said one, I said one day I will revisit this chassis and find something like, I don't know. I said I would find something worthy of using this chassis again. And I just didn't know what that was. I always had this kind of an idea of because of the battleship gray sort of color, it is, and it is powder coated by the way, but the powder coating on this is so freaking like thick and textured, it's awesome. I always wanted to do like a battleship themed build with this, but it's just a, it's just a rectangle. So how would I have utilized that into any sort of a, a build? And then it dawned on me. What if I made a diorama in here? You guys know I like to do models and stuff. Now this is just a, this is a pie in the sky dream right now. I, building the models takes more time than building the computers. And we all know how that goes for me. So I'm just like, if I were to get a few 700 scale models, the nice thing about 700 scale, they're not extremely detailed depending on the ones you get. So I could actually build a few models and then have, do like an epoxy layer down here or build like a, a, something that fits down in here and then have the ocean waves and have some ships in here and fighting it. And I was like, dude, what if I even drilled holes up like through the, through the ships and did the whole cotton ball effect of like a fire plume and have it light up like looking like a, sh a shot coming out of there, it'd be awesome. Cause there's plenty of room to do it. And then I thought, you know what? I didn't, I won't even necessarily have to put a 560 rad down here because you know what? In the front, I can still fit. And you know, I can even just take this out and show you guys. This is one of the best things about Case Labs. And I'm excited that the company is, is building parts for these again and then eventually gonna start remanufacturing these cases because there's also a bigger version than the SMA8. It started with a T, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it had this big compartment on the top as well. So people were able to run dual 560s up top and a 560 in the bottom and a 360 in the front and a 480 right here as well. Like it's insane. So I, because I can't do SLI anymore, like if I did a 4090 in this SLI, if I wanted to do SLI, I would have to do 3090. And even the 3090 Ti, I'll tell you, 3090 Ti, I could do SLI, but I, there's no point, no games use it. So you see how I just took this off? I can still fit a 360 rad right there. So I could have a 360 in the front, a 480 in the, 480 in the top, and the only thing that goes down here in the bottom now would be the power supply sideways. So I could build a wall right here, and you know what I could have? I could have a ship up here dropping depth charges, have a clear window here, this is a submarine scene. So like, it would literally be like, you guys have always said, Jay, build a computer in a ship. Well, the ships aren't big enough. Even a 200 scale would barely, maybe, maybe fit an ITX build. But this would be like the diorama build of a lifetime. So, so it's, instead of build a computer in a ship, it's build, build, some, a, ships in a computer. build some ships in a computer. So imagine having a destroyer right here. And here's the thing, I could even use a 350 scale. I have two Fletcher class destroyers that I have, one of them's almost done. I, I stopped building that a while ago because when COVID lockdown was going, I was building ships like a madman. Like my Yamato turned out amazing. A ship I thought was gonna take me a year, took me a month. Isn't that, isn't that backwards? But I spent like 15 hours a day during lockdown for a month building that ship. Like AD, ADHD was just like, gotta finish, gotta finish. But anyway, the Fletcher is about this big in a 350 class. So imagine a Fletcher right here and then having like, I don't know, a German U-boat down here, submerged in acrylic. And then I could have like some underwater effects going on here. Any lighting up here shining down or bottom shining up through would be sick. But Jay, how would you get it in there? I'm glad you asked. The bottom just unscrews. So let's go ahead and take you for a ride on that. This is like, I feel like for me personally, and those of you that know me and know that I like boats, and that's, that's a real statement. That is not a sponsored deal know that this would be the perfect way to incorporate a return of the SMA8s. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I would even be willing to replace my Inwin 925 build at home with this when it's done, because it would just be such a, a masterpiece. But check this out, if I unscrew this, if you're wondering what the Velcro was for, I had a, a fan hub that I just Velcroed down here that all my fans attached to this. Do we need more access than this? 
And then I wouldn't even need these pass-throughs anymore. I could find something to do with these holes because um, I wouldn't be using the lower rad. I would have more than enough cooling with a 480 up top and a 360 in the front and a single res, single loop set up to be able to, uh, to have this be plenty of cooling for a 4090 and like a 13th or maybe at this point a 14th gen. You know how long that's going to be. What is this? What no, I know what this is. See how it's yellow? I did have, I did a video about this. You can find it. In fact, we'll try and put it on the screen right here. It was the very first time I had any sort of a drip slash leak in my system and I had found it coming from one of my 90 degrees and I bet you that's just, because I never took this off. I just wiped it up and cleaned it up. That's just where it seeped in. But um, can you guys see it now? Like an underwater scene right here, a ship up here, the waves. I think that would be one of the most amazing builds ever in this. But I also feel like this deserves a repaint because of the fact that it's just seen better days. I'm torn on that though because it's kind of like an old car. And what I mean by that is what's sort of become popular these days is patina builds where you just, you seal in the rust and you seal in the discoloration and instead of going through all the paint and body work, you just, you seal in like, this is the age, this is the wear and tear, this is how the car looks after 50 years. I just, I just don't think the, the type of patina that's on here is warrant, it doesn't, it doesn't warrant leaving it. Like the kind of scratches and stuff that's on it don't seem like all that, like, I mean, it's, it's not bad, but I don't know what, what color I would paint it. I would probably just do another gunmetal, to be honest. But I feel comfortable doing this because if I, something up, I could reach out to the company in Sweden and get some replacement parts. It just sucks now that's all the way in Sweden when this company used to be 45 minutes away. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit of a drive now. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Don't want to spec it yourself? Then choose from BLD's pre-configured player PC systems designed to fit your needs and budget. To see the full lineup and specs of the NZXT BLD Player Series pre-built PCs, follow the sponsored link in the description below. But I would have to build, I would have to have some sort of a separator wall between the power supply which goes, like I said, vertical right here. You can see this, this case even had dual power supplies in mind at one point. Even though it wasn't officially a dual system type of computer, it did have dual power supply provision. So one could go here and one could go there. Um, or you could put one on either side, obviously. But if I have some sort of a separator wall in there, then I would be able to like not have the power supply show through or just do the power supply, but then maybe do a mirror backing on the epoxy or something and then not worry about making a wall. Just the, the thing in here becomes what it is that is uh, obscuring the view of the power supply. And then I would just have the power supply fan on this side. And the cool thing is, you guys know I do a lot of um, videos utilizing Singularity Computers parts. They have distro plates and stuff made for this if I wanted to go that route. They came up with a distro plate that goes in the bottom right here. But I wouldn't need that. Because one, that would then take away my ability to do any sort of a diorama on here. But two, everything, what I loved about this particular system is with the exception of the pass-through fittings, as you can see going through here and through there, there and there, um, everything, like the CPU loop, because this was, this was a dual loop. I had one loop for the CPU, which used the 4080 on the top, and I had one loop for the GPU, which utilized the 560 and a 280. I ended up taking that 280 out later, but I had a 280 mounted to this, and check this out, I could do a 560 mounted to this as well if I, if I wanted. The problem is the power supply needs a place to go. So, yeah. And this fitting right here got a little too close to the rad because this was a fat rad. So as you can see, I had to notch the little cover right there. It's an ugly job. And I even have a video of me doing that. Um, had to notch that, but it, it fit. Dude, this is such a big rad. But yeah, I think that would be That'd be awesome because having a 560 and a 480 and a 360 for a single GPU and a single CPU would be a bit overkill. And then I can't do my diorama deal like I wanted. But I think one of the things I need to do right now is I need to reclaim this pump. It needs to be cleaned up and stuff. I've already done one video cleaning it up. I remember doing all that. And I remember putting this in a build saying it would be nostalgic. I just can't which build I put it in.
But anyway, moving on. Oh, and I, and I wanna show you something else too when it comes to the build quality once I get this off. Things that just don't exist in today's world with many PC manufacturers. It's also, here's the fun fact. This case, do you wanna know how much it cost back in the day that people complained about? Fully outfitting it, because the thing is when you ordered it, you could configure it how you wanted. Did you want one 560 rad mount slash fan mount or two? Did you want a 480? Because you see on the top, how it actually has holes for the fans. It's not just a big open cutout. Did you want four holes, three holes, two holes, one hole? Like why anyone would do one hole, it's beyond me. Do you want just a power button and a reset button? Did you want two USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0? Or four USB 3.0? Did you want audio jack headers? Like all this stuff could be configured. People really complained about the pricing back then at about 500 to $600 for this case. 500 to $600 today, I don't think gets you a case anywhere near this level of just how well it was thought out and such. And you guys remember Red Mist, the white one? That wasn't my build, that was a build I did for a friend. I hate this part. Like, I had this, this nut is so close to the other mount right here, which was intended to be for a, uh, as you can see, uh, drives, but in this case, it's where the wires come through. I, that was one of those lucky moments where I didn't measure. I just drilled through and I was like, dee, 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 and then later I was like, oh my gosh, that's so, that's so lucky. And yes, I realize I'm scratching it right now a little bit, but I am probably gonna repaint all of this. I don't think you can get anywhere near this quality of a product today for this price. It's just unfortunate that we, we lost the OG folks. Jim, Kevin, you know what's up. <clears throat> anyway, I can take this out. But now you have an opportunity to own this yourself. Now, one of the other things I had done, as you see these grommets for passing through, none of these holes existed, I had to make these. I actually had to depin that. There we go. And then I could pull this through. And the reason why I want this back, I'm just dropping screws everywhere, is I now have another pump. <laughs> Although it's an Alpha Cool VPP655T Solo, which is basically like, not exactly a Lang DD5. These are not the most reliable pumps. I had to replace one of these. Actually, no, I had to rebuild one. I did a video about that as well. There are so many videos that this one, this one chassis provided for me. And that's why I kept it around. Do you know how many people emailed me begging to buy this case from me because they knew they couldn't get anywhere else? Well, the value on this is plummeted because of the fact that you can eventually. Unless the fact that it was my build makes it more valuable. Actually, that devalues it. I'm excited and this is where this is gonna be a lot of work. And I'm really curious as to if you guys would be invested in viewing a series about doing that. I probably, I don't know if I would do a video about making the models. I'd probably just show the models and then show them done in the same video. This would be one of those projects that goes along in the background. Um, but I, I think, I think people would agree. This is probably one of the, and check the way I did this too. I have the screw going through there and then a nut as a standoff that I could use to adjust how far it was away from the back wall and then nut again on the back side. That way the reservoirs didn't lean backwards. So I had this kind of a spacer. It's just super basic, but it was so amazing. That's it. Kind of a shorter, easier video talking about something that I have not, that has been sitting back here for well over a year. You guys saw it sitting up on the back counter forever. It's been sitting down there now. And this is one of those like, I had that epiphany aha moment in one of the previous videos where I said, diorama. I watch a lot of videos. Like I, I watch Plasmo. I watch his channel of building models. There's a bunch of model channels that I watch, but I've always wanted to do a diorama build, but I just was like, how would I display it? Where would I put it? In the computer, stupid. Where else would it go? You like computers and you like boats. I should just get World of Warships to sponsor it. Put their logo here. It wouldn't be out of place. <laughs>